All right, today again, we're gonna be given ratios and we're going to be turning them into single unit ratios. But first, we're given rates on our left side. We're given solutions and unit rates on the right side. And let's see if you can go ahead and pause this and match the left side rates to its unit rate on the right side. So now would be a great time to go ahead and pause the video. All right, so hopefully pause the video, you answer the questions. Now before I even go about typing this in my calculator, I can go ahead and find a lot of these answers by just using the power of estimation. I know that 16.4 over eight, it means it's gonna be, I can round this to approximately 16, and 16 over eight means 16 divided by eight. So that answer is gonna be about two, because I know 16 divided by eight is two, so this is gonna be a little greater than two. And if I actually type this out, in my calculator, I know that 16.40 or 16.4 divided by 8 does in fact give me 2.05 because 8 goes into 16 two old times and 8 goes into 0 .40, 0 .05 times. Now, another one that's easy to estimate. Let's look at this one down here. Let's round this to 15. Well, 15 over 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I know that 15.25 divided by 5 is going to be a little greater than 3. And that would be matched to that guy up there. Leaving last but not least, if you type in 18.5 divided by 4, you do in fact get 4.625. Now, uh, hopefully before you watch the video, you took the notes down a couple windows ago and you are filling in those two missing numbers. So I'll give you a chance to go ahead and do that real quick. While you write it down, you go ahead and listen. This is a grocery store that's selling its signature sauce in four different sizes. We have the 12 ounce can, the 24 ounce or is bottle, the 18 ounce and the five ounce. Which of the sizes is going to cost the least per ounce? So if we were having to buy a lot of these, what would be the cheapest in the long run? Well, we know when we set this up, it's gonna be money over everything. In this case, money, dollar amount over ounces. When we set this up correctly, it's just basically going to be dollars divided by ounces. So when I set up my top one, it's 13.44 over 12. we got to get it down to 1. So divide by 12. Divide by 12. When you type in 13.44 divided by 12, my answer is going to be $1.12. It makes sense because we can look at these. When I stack all these, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 23.52 over 24. 18.54 over 18, last but not least, I have 6.25 over five. When I'm looking at these, I know that if my numerator is greater than my denominator, when I divide it out, the answer is going to be greater than one. Well, if there's any scenario where my numerator is less than my denominator, that answer is going to be less than one because, let's look at this one right here, 24 divided by 24 is one, so any number less than 24 divided by 24 will give me an answer that is less than a dollar per ounce. So I know like from the get-go, this 24 ounce is looking like the cheapest one. Now, mathematically, let's go ahead and solve it to prove it. We gotta get each of these down to one because we're finding the unit rate. Let's go ahead and space these out just a tad. So 23.52 we're divided by 24, divided by 24 straight across. And when you type in 23.52 divided by 24, we get zero dollars. 98 cents. The next one, I know 18.54 is a little greater than 18. So when I divide that out, I know my answer is probably going to be a little greater than 1. So when you type in 18.54 and divide it both across by 18, we get $1.03. So still cheaper than the first one, but not cheaper than the 98 cents per ounce. Last but not least, this one is probably going to be the greatest amount because 6.25 five, I mean, that one to one ratio is not quite there. So if you type in 6.25 divided by five, we get a dollar and 25 cents per ounce. So we're going to circle these in green so we know what we're looking at. We have a dollar 12, we have 98 cents, we have a dollar 03, and a dollar 25. Looking at the blue section down there, it says how can you determine the cost for each size? Well, we just did that by dividing straight across by finding the unit rate. And which is the least per ounce? And like we said from the get-go, using our estimation, this 24 ounce is in fact the cheapest uh, price per ounce. The next cheapest would be the 18 ounce, except 
the 24 ounce is five cents cheaper per ounce. So if we're buying a lot of it, we want to go with the 24 ounce. Move on to the next one. If you don't have this in your notes, you can just go ahead and follow along as I do this. This is straight off a former EOG question. This is a released EOG question, meaning that it has been on a prior six rate EOG. So again, we have money over everything. This case again is money over ounces. So when I am doing this, when I stack these, it's just going to be the dollar amount over the ounces. So it's basically dollars divided by ounces. So it'd be Top would be 6.50 divided by 60, and we get 0 0.1083. The next one you do 5.50 divided by 54, we get 0 0.10. Believe it was 18. Next one is 5.61 divided by 48, we get 0.1168. Last but not least, four dollars and fifty cents divided by 40 gives us 0.1125. Now, we talked about this a little bit in class. Money is always rounded to two decimal places. So I'm not really concerned with this fourth one I wrote down, so I'm just going to go ahead and cross those out. But the third number determines whether we're going to round the second number up or if that second number stays the same. So it's about 10 cents, 10 cents, 11 cents, 11 cents. Now we look at that third digit. Our third digit here. This is 0 0.10 cents and this eight. The eight's gonna make this zero round up to one. So really, the eight makes this 10 cents go up to approximately 11 cents per ounce. Over here, it's 10 cents and then the third digit's a one. Well, that one is less than five, remember. Five or higher makes it round up, four below makes it stay, so the one stays and this is gonna be approximately 10 cents per ounce. 0.116, that the six will make the one round up to two, so that's about 12 cents per ounce. Last but not least, the two is going to make this one stay, so this one is also going to be approximately 11 cents per ounce. So it says, what is the lowest price per ounce, or what is the best buy, the cheapest price, is going to be this guy right here, aka because it's 10 cents, aka the answer would be B, the Don Store. Moving on. I believe you had this in your notes and you're missing the $155. So, Jane's working at a grocery store for 20 hours during a week. She earns $155 for that work. If she worked a total of 24 hours, how much would she earn? Well, I know I'm comparing money to hours here. So first, I'm going to set up my ticket. We have money over hours. I'm going to go ahead and give me my rate. We have $155 going on top. We have $155, she earns that much. We're working 20 hours, make that a little neater. 20 hours, but eventually we're looking for how much she would make in 24 hours. Now a basic ratio problem, I would say 20 times what is 24, but we all know that 20 doesn't go into 24 evenly. So I gotta find this unit rate first. I gotta find what she makes per hour before going back up to 24. So we gotta knock it down to one by dividing for going back up 24 by using multiplication. So going straight across, we know that 20 divided by itself is what. So we gotta divide that by 20, divide that by 20. Well, if you type this in your calculator, $155 or 155 divided by 20 gives us 7.75, which means that every hour she makes, every hour she works, excuse me, she makes $7.75. This is our unit rate, that's her hourly wage. So once we find this very important number, the unit rate, we can answer any question that's asked. It's asking, well, if that was the case, then how much for 24 hours? We'll need to do times 24 times 24. We type in 7.75 times 24, we get a dollar amount of $186. And the, it's not 186 over 24, that's not the answer. The answer is just 186. It's saying in 24 hours, she earns $186. Go back and see if your answer makes sense. Well, in 20 hours, she made $155. So in 24, she's going to make a little more than the $155. So the $186, 186 does make sense in this scenario. On your own, please go ahead and pause this video right now. Read the problem. Try it on your own. If you don't get it, go back, review it, or get your own pace. 
Believe you. Self got a lesson. Now's the time to try and try this on your own. Go ahead and pause it. All right. So again, like we said, hopefully you paused it. I'm looking at my ticket here. What's being compared? Well, a new fuel efficient car can travel 282 miles. That looks important. 282 miles on six gallons of gas. Most of the time, the ticket will be in the first sentence, unless it's doing like inches to centimeters and it gives you the rate at the very end of parentheses, but usually you can find it in that first sentence. So I know I'm comparing miles to gallons, and I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, miles on top because we read that first. We have miles to gallons, there's my ticket. Now this is the rate. How many miles? We have 282. Still keep the miles on top, 282 on 6 gallons. Well, how many on 15? We all know 6 doesn't go into 15 evenly. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it over and off to the side because first we need to find our unit rate. So how many miles we get on 1 gallon? Well, I know to get from 6 to 1, we got to divide it by 6. Divide it by 6. When you type in 282, divide it by 6. You get the number 47. So what this means is that we can travel in this car 47 miles on one gallon, aka 47 miles per gallon. That's not too bad. Now, once we find the unit rate, any number they ask after that, you just multiply it. It then says how many at this rate, how many or how far can we go on 15 gallons? You times 15 times 15. Plug that into your calculator. And 47 times 15 gives us a total of 705 miles. So at the rate of 47 miles per gallon, that means we can go 705 miles on 15 gallons to this fuel efficient car.